Okay, having a look at this DAG dry air generator. It's basically a giant dehumidifier. It's not working. Apparently, although I don't know in what way it isn't working. We've got some little green lights on, so that is um, we've got power to it then. It needs the fans running. It's um, it doesn't have its own fans. It runs off the uh, drain drying fans. So let's go and see if we can get them fired up. A couple of cables. One's probably the crankcase heater because they keep that powered up all year round. Something like that. And then the other one's probably the power cable. Okay, got this great big fan in here. As I'll give you an idea, that this is eye level for me. So that's at the top of my head. So it's it's a good size. Somebody's obviously been working on the motor at some point. Uh, that just goes through there. Chuffing great big fan blade. Uh, smells a bit mousy in here. Got a control panel. Um, run. Dag interlock. Start and run. Should we press a button? See what happens. Nothing. Should we turn to start? <laughs> That's the compressor section, that's where the air goes out. That's your condenser coil. And then next to it, next to the coil over is the evaporator. Um, looks like a, I think it's a bit uh, compressor. It's got a label on it uh, somewhere there. Can't see, it does look a little bit wet down there with the oil, but not, not sodden. So, so, mind you, things, if it's leaked when it's off, it won't make, it won't make a lot of oil. Um, I've had these leak on the discharge pipe before, but this looks fine. Rotor lock style connector there. That looks a bit wet, but it's not really soppy wet, is it? But like I say, if it's leaked when it's been off, it won't leave it won't leave an oil trace. Uh, oil accumulator rather down there. Uh, Let's have a look. Screen went blank then. And that's the other section, so condenser, evaporator. Um, this is a newer one to most of the ones we work on. Um, I've had them leak on that joint there. Uh, these can leak. 
I did, did hear the guy who used to look after these said they used to take the guts out of these because um, they used to have trouble with them starting I can't remember exactly what would happen I think the thing would go off an LP before it um, did anything um, before it got going uh, we could we could go and get the magnet and put that on there see if we get anything in there um, that looks a little bit wet but I'm not seeing anything shouting at me leaks but like I say if it's not been and then we've got oil oil uh, safety switch there and then the LPHP there it could even be somewhere with these little pipes here um, hmm. I might put my gauges on and see what we've got. See what standing pressure we've got on the high side as well. Okay, suction standing pressure is about 32, 34 psi, which is about, as a guess, minus 18. It's just like a deep freeze, so it's not that cold here today. And we need to get on the high side, but look at this. Now, either one being stupid, run down that cap. Won't come off. How are you supposed to get the cap off? Um, you either, I don't know. You would think the factory's designed this for to bolt on here. It can't bolt on the other way around because that pipe comes from the electrics box. You would think that cap would have room to come off, wouldn't you? Otherwise it kind of makes it pointless. There we go. There we go. Uh, just make sure that tab is shut. Is it isn't shut. I bet it has to be open. It has to be open or she can't get the tap past the corner. She's daft. It's very daft. Oh, let's drop it in the dirt, shall we? That's very clever. Okay, if we see more than 30 psi, we could have a problem with that solenoid valve. Um, well, much more than 30 psi. I mean, what is the ambient here? It's got to be 20 degrees, so standing pressure should probably be 150 psi. Oh, 100. 100. It's interesting, oh, it's still not very high is it, there's no liquid in there because 100 is still 11 degrees, is it 11 degrees out? Pass. Okay we've opened the two taps up and bled the pressure across and it's looking like we've got about enough gas in there for a standing pressure equivalent of about 5 degrees C which is like a walk-in cooler so it's not the temperature of a fridge outside today. So I'm going to say it's got no gas in it. Um, so let's get the old leak detector fired up. Okay, well, we picked a tiny little leak up on the solenoid. I weren't convinced. And then there was a bit under the uh, ball valve, this liquid I shut off ball valve. Just looked a bit wet. Um, but again, I don't know. And then we, uh, we've got the pressure lines that go to the oil switch and the um, um, oh, that is weird. Oil switch and the um, pressure switches. And when I stuck that in there. Saying there's something in there, 
But then why is it picking it up off of here? Seems a bit random. And then the other thing we were picking up off was that plug. And there's some. Um, so I think we get some spray around that. See if we get any bubbles. And that's been there for 20, 25 years, not leaked until but then, you know. I have some thread sealer on there that's dried out. I don't know what they used to do with these plugs, the press cold stuff. The fusible plugs of sealant they use on that would dry out after 20 years and leak like a sieve. Um, and then potentially, up there. It doesn't like. Um, that section there. Uh, and then we've got the accumulator. Well, let's check that out because that looks prime thing for the bottom to have rusted out. I mean these these could be a big leak as far as this concerned but this thing probably holds um, I think there's something like 17 kilos so what's that in pounds? 36 pounds? 38 pounds? Something like that. So it's a big system. Uh, oh. That coil there. I think it's just a. Uh, it's got a little patch there where it looked. It's just a. Uh, get some spray around there, I think, and then we'll pop the cover off of there. Right. I've been over these, I can't find a leak on them. I'm wondering because they're plastic, I, I don't know if they get porous. I mean that thinks there's something there. I've put spray on it and all sorts, I can't see anything. And then that plug there that was going mad earlier, we're not getting anything on that now. But I'm wondering if that's because the block's cooled down, if the metal's cooled down a bit, it might have uh, tightened up a bit. I don't know. But we were definitely getting something off of that before. Because um, we've had the power off for an hour or so. And we've got what push we got in there. 110, 110 psi, should be enough. Oh, battery's going flat on my leak detector now. We are getting not going to work. That was going mad off of there. So uh, we got a little tiny hit off of this. Um, that looked oily so I'm, I'm wondering whether that's um, leaked when it's been off. Of that, that they would see, and you can see all the oil in there that's sort of bubbled up. So, let's see, this probably won't leak at all now. Look, nothing. We've been around the accumulator, I've been over the coil, not picked anything up. I've done the half of the condenser coil and not picked anything up. If it leaked when it was running you'd get oil staining, but it's probably leaked when it's been off because it's off most of the year. Okay. Well, the H1 Pro, the battery's gone flat, and then we detect select, the battery's gone flat, so we're down to the third backup, which is the old TIFF, which uh, is not overly sensitive, but so we check the bellows on there, we're not picking anything up, well the wind's picked up a bit here, which isn't helping, uh, this one, if it was on there, you'd, you'd be full of oil anything up in there. This doesn't pick anything up in that trunking. 
admittedly we've got the cap off of this now, but we did the wind's picked up, so we did we did pick something up. Which he's not gonna do now. Mm. Is that, that looked just oily when we got here. It got wet with oil, so obviously it has leaked to get oil on it. That one had a little oil stain in that corner, so that has obviously leaked. And I've had these absolutely poor, I've had them literally dripping liquid out half an hour or an hour after they'd passed a pressure test with nitrogen. Well, pressure test with nitrogen, vacuumed and then charged, and then it was pouring out, so these can leak for fun. That has leaked, but it's not showing anything now. Like I say, this isn't the most sensitive detector. But it's a few years old, probably wants a new sensor. But not picking anything up on there. And we aren't picking anything up on there. And it doesn't go off on where that cable tie was, which is what the other one the H10 was going off on. Mm, it's R22. We need to find out what oil the compressor's got on. If he's lucky, it's got a, a PoE oil in there. Otherwise, we're going to need to change the oil and run it on 407C. That's what we've done with the other ones. Which would be a pain in the ass. Pardon my French. Because you can't, can't really pump these down. I suppose you might be able to shut that ball valve and pump all the liquid into the condenser side to change the oil again if we have to change the oil a couple of times. Or we should have to recover all the gas out to change the oil. Hmm. Uh, we put a bit of nitrogen in there, we've got that to about 300, 330, it's dropping actually. No, maybe it has, a little tiny bit, 330. We've just got to all these terminals in here. And we are not picking anything up. Okay, I doubt the camera's going to pick it up. I'm not sure if I can get that in there in the same place and still have the light on it. That's, uh, no, that's not working. It is... So maybe if I zoom in... Basically, I'll see a little bubble there, which is something that, you know, it's not, not necessarily uh, kilos worth. That is pretty rusty looking. I couldn't pick anything up on that. I'm going to do this before because I've, I've talked to my business partner who's had these leaked before but not have any oil on them. So we'll try that. This is a funny thing with leaks. Now we've got more pressure in there. That is not going off the same as it was before. But something I didn't like was in this area here on the coil. Which is not going to do again now. Isn't that just... Oh, there we go. What 
was consistently going off in that area. So it makes you think maybe we've got a leak in the coil. It's got a bit of a mark on it, but then they've got this hole here where the birds have probably packed a hole in the uh, filter. And it's quite a uh, it's quite a deep coil, so we might have to drill the rivets out to get in there. But it is cons it was consistently. Off there. Right, I've got it on manual, it was on auto before. Not happy in that area at all, is it? That's going to be expensive. It's a big coil. Okay, we've drilled the rivets out of that panel. Got me H10 charging up again. We'll just give it a quick go with this one, but it's a bit. Non-conclusive, isn't it really? That sort of height. Oh, it's not very good. Okay. there consistently, which is about this high, which is about that high. Let's go into manual mode. On the other side, it is going off in the roughly the same place, both sides.
coming from this side. That would probably be a cheaper coil to make. But it's so windy here, it's um, any leak in the core, it could get blow, you know, blown away. Yeah, it's definitely in that area, in that sort of area there. It's, it's, I might go over the whole of the coil and just see. Um, I've got my ultrasonic detector, so I could spray a load of water on there and see if I could hear, hear the leak. Okay, I've got the AccuTrack ultrasonic detector going and we were picking something up. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that on there. I can hear something in that area. If I move away it goes, if I move back there. Gone, back, gone, back. So it's there. Still hear it. Louder there. Louder. That's much louder. Going again. So it's in that area there. Gone. Louder. Gone. Somewhere there, I think. So that would be like it was on on that top point there. There. That's really loud there. I don't know if it's helped, but what I've done is sprayed some water on there, so if it is bubbly, if it's gas coming out, it's got something to blow bubbles in so you can hear it. But uh, I don't know if that makes any difference. You might be able to hear it anyway. There. I might have a go at digging the fins out, see if we can find something. Okay, back at it with the H10. It's in, that, it's in that area there, I think. Well, it's definitely something there. Um, it's quite a big coil, so it could be an isolated thing, or it could be they could have leaks all over it. I just sprayed some leak spray in there. Oh, I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up. I seem to have a line of bubbles coming down there and it's in that gap but in no other area so I'm actually wondering whether that's right where the leak is 
while it walks out for a bit. Might be worth pulling a few fins off. Yeah, it's, it's sort of in that one or that one. It's difficult to see because there's any little viewing things messed up on the camera, but I think. There we go. That's where the gas has gone. So we're probably, it's, it's fairly near the surface, it's probably on that coil there, that pipe on there. And we can probably pull the fins off round it and braze over it. Because a new coil for this is going to be a few grand, because there's, there's companies that make bespoke coils, we take this one out and ship it to them and they just copy it. Because um, I think the company that makes these has got, they, don't, they no, no longer exist. So you ain't going to get spares for it. And the only other way you get a spare is uh, it's a, a Swede coil. I'm guessing that's from Sweden. Um, that would probably be a freaking nightmare to get one of those imported now. Um, so it'd probably be easy to get one made here if they even make one. I'll take some details anyway because we might be able to get one, you know, get a price out of them. Anyway, I'll work with the customer and see what they want to do.